Hello guys, it's the Caribbean Bookworm and in this video I'm going to be giving you a series of book recommendations especially for those of you who are just starting an undergraduate physics degree. Let's get into it. Alright, so for those of you who have been on this channel for long enough, you might know that I have a particular interest in science and you can see it either in my old intros or, or you've heard me talk about that before. In particular, I'm quite interested in the area of physics um, up to the point that I went to study physics at university. Three years ago, I even made a video called uh, my top five favorite um, popular science books so far and I've been planning on making an update video ever since um, in either physics or other areas of science. And I thought, what would be a better way to do that than to actually talk about some actual textbook recommendations, especially for those of you who are actually interested in, interested in pursuing physics. Without further ado, I'm going to give you a couple of book recommendations which I think would be quite handy, especially for those of you who are either in high school and planning on pursuing physics, or you're already like in undergraduate and you're thinking about good books that will kind of help you supplement with your learning um, of the material at uni. First of all, I have the textbook book called Fundamentals of Physics by Resnick and Halliday and this is a very famous intro to a physics um, type of textbook and it's very famous on par with the textbook called University Physics which is much chunkier and dense than this but I think what I find really nice about this textbook is that it goes through so many explanations and so many details um, in regards to introductory physics so topics such as thermodynamics, um, dynamics, mechanics and even even a little bit of um, relative, relativity and quantum mechanics in the more updated and recent editions of this textbook. And after having been through both university physics and Halliday, um, Halliday's Fundamentals of Physics, I found um, Fundamentals of Physics to be a bit more nice and more well organized, or for lack of a better word, just better, more clear in general, in contrast to university physics. Fundamentals of Physics is much more descriptive, whereas um, university physics tends to try to go a lot more into the derivations, which is very nice, especially if you're going deeper into the field of physics. But as an introductory physics course, especially since some people taking those intro courses aren't even planning on becoming physics majors, it's, I don't think it's um, much that, I think it's a bit more too dense for the purpose of that course. So Fundamentals of Physics very useful textbook especially if you're doing intro physics. Next up I have a textbook which is very useful for programming and programming is a very essential aspect of a physics degree since you're going to be using it for to do a lot of things such as um, computational modeling of physical systems etc. And uh, nowadays a lot of universities tend to teach their students the programming language Python which is why a textbook which I would heavily recommend to learn Python is um, Crash Course of Python Programming for beginners and um, it's by I think Eric Mattens um, I think a Canadian professor of computer science or something along those lines um, I think a professor of computer science or physics I can write that down but this programming textbook is pretty nice and it reads a lot like a for dummies textbook like one of those for dummies textbook that you'd see in a bookstore and that's really good especially for someone who's, who's never had any experience with programming it gives you very clear oversight as to what are some of of the basics um, of programming in general so not just python but in general everything to do with programming so what are these so-called floaters what are strings what are lists dictionaries how do you manipulate them etc and in my opinion you don't have to go through the entire thing i think you can get a very good general gist of things by just reading the first couple of chapters um, but it is highly recommended that you get yourself in this textbook either digitally or physically if you want to learn python as quickly as possible and in a way that isn't too confusing since there are a lot of sources for learning Python but not all of them tends to be very clear and straightforward. So I'd highly recommend this if you're interested in learning the programming language of Python. Next up we have a mathematics textbook and in particular a calculus textbook. Calculus is in essence the language of physics. Whenever you look at physics, um, if you google it or something, you definitely see integral symbols or derivatives and Tom Thomas Calculus is a very handy textbook for calculus in general. So whether it is Calc 1, Calc 2, 
2 or calc 3 um calc 1 and 2 at least according to my understanding of like the u.s system being um calculus 1 so calculus 1 being the study of derivatives so what are they what are limits and such Calc 2, Calculus 2 being integrals, different techniques of integrals, and Calculus 3 being multivariable calculus. I think this textbook is good for all of them, but of course I'm speaking only from experience with Calc 1 and Calc 2, so um, differentiation and integration. It is a very handy textbook with lots of exercises that you can work through and answers at the end of the book. Um, so I Definitely, definitely recommend this textbook, especially if you can find a secondhand version of this. It doesn't have to be the most recent edition, in my opinion, because calculus is one of those things which doesn't change. Like the different techniques of integrations and such doesn't change over time. I think the only thing in regards to relevance that you have to keep in mind is not to buy a textbook from like the 1950s or something, because you might have like problems with notations. But besides that, I think um, uh, Thomas Calculus textbook would be quite handy even though I know that a lot of people use Essex as well. And I can imagine that being quite a good textbook. I have it digitally. In particular, I don't know if I prefer like Essex over Thomas Calculus, but I just know that this one does the trick for me. So I'd highly recommend it if you're doing um, calculus, like differentiation, integration, and heck, even in um, differential equations. Um, this textbook would be quite handy for especially um, ordinary differential equations if you're doing that. Next up, back to the more physics-y textbooks, is a textbook called Foundations of Astrophysics, written by Barbara R um, Ryden, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, Barbara Ryden. Um, this textbook is a gorgeous textbook, and it's especially recommended if you're intending on taking lots of astronomy-related electives, so things such as stellar astronomy, um, solar system astronomy, galactic astronomy, etc. It gives a very brief and general overview of these various topics, and it doesn't actually even in my opinion require a lot of mathematics to begin with to follow it just some algebra some basic knowledge of vectors and some basic um calculus you could say so, so knowing how to integrate and differentiate something and this is one of those textbooks which in my opinion is handy even if you're say a hobbyist that wants to learn more about astronomy and astrophysics because it's just a very very clear textbook especially if you have a little bit of a ma mathematics background um so foundations of astrophysics really good book and this author um barbara Ryden, she writes very clearly she even has a book on introduction to cosmology if i'm not mistaken i have the pdf and in that she writes very clearly on that subject as well so i highly recommend this textbook if you're interested in learning a bit more about astronomy beyond um, popular science um, textbook things. And on to my final textbook recommendation for this video is if you've seen any physics video on YouTube talking about textbooks, you've probably seen this book and I'm going to sound quite generic and overrated, but it's for a good reason. But the last book I have on this list is the Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering, this very chunky textbook. It's a very chunky textbook and it's it's it, almost every physics video on YouTube are talking about textbook, which is partially why I bought it myself. Um, but when actually going through the courses and actually using it, I noticed that this is a very good reference textbook, especially for practically almost any mathematics topic. Like say you want to brush up on your trigonometry from high school, like you want to like go back to your unit circles or say you want to actually know something about say differentiation, integration, using the U substitution. Like it just gives very clear overviews about mathematical topics and you even have a lot of exercises here. And it goes not even just for the like first year topics of um, a physics degree, so linear algebra, calculus, etc. But it even goes to the more advanced mathematical topics from what I saw. Like it goes into stuff like statistics, it goes into tensor um, analysis and um, differential geometry and things that will be handy for more advanced um, mathematical concepts in physics. And I just find this book in particular for that particular reason to be very, very useful for anyone planning on pursuing physics and perhaps especially especially if you know that you might want to stick with physics. So if you want to have a mathematical leg up and want to really, really hone in on that aspect, like refine your 
mathematical toolbox, I highly recommend you to get this particular textbook. It's very chunky. Um, it might be a bit expensive, but if you can lend it from your library or if you can find it online digitally, I still think it's a very handy thing for you to have. So that was it for my textbook recommendations in regards to like early junior undergraduate physics students. Um, I myself am one of those, so I can per se talk about many other subjects. Um, but of those that I'm confident in, or at least of those that I've used textbook in already, those are the ones which I talked about. Disclaimer, of course, being that you don't have to particularly get these specific textbooks for the various courses that you're taking. Like at the end of the day, you do what works for you, whether that is actually getting textbooks or just watching lectures, using online notes, whatever that may be, do what works for you the best. And if you know that a particular textbook works much better for you than others, then do that. Like you really don't have to get the precise recommendations that you see like people giving online. Like for example, if you have a mathematical methods book that works better than the one that was recommended here, I highly encourage you to just do that. And it's something um, which I myself did, which I found some really nice hidden gems in regards to a physics textbook that I wouldn't have otherwise discovered. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys stay tuned for more videos and let me know if you want to see more science related content on this channel, whether books or otherwise. Have a good day guys and bye.